Sup and good day gamers, a formal bust here with Rage 2, a review. But first, my sponsor as always, H2O, drink it up or die. <sighs> Cheers gamers. Rage 2, this was released back in May of 2019, uh, developed by id Software and Avalanche Studios, and published by Bethesda Softworks. It's described on uh, Steam as Rage 2 brings together two studio powerhouses, Avalanche Studios, Masters of Open World Insanity, and id Software, creators of the FPS, to deliver a carnival of carnage where you can go anywhere, shoot anything, and explode everything. Those, those, uh, I, I, I take, I take, I take offense with those claims they make there at the end, where you can go anywhere, shoot anything, and explode anything, any, everything, because it's just not true. <laughs> You'll, uh, we'll get into that and we'll see. Uh, but it is tagged on Steam as an action game, an FPS game, an open world game, and a post-apocalyptic game. Uh, there is DLC for this game. Uh, Terror Mania and Rise of the Ghosts, as well as there's plenty of cosmetics and such. Uh, that you can get for your weapons in game to make them look differently. Uh, I have not played or, you know, done anything other than look at the trailers for Terror Mania or Rise of the Ghost. This review is solely over the contents of the base game. And this game is available on Steam for $59.99, that is United States dollars. And of course, during Steam uh, sales and other, you know, promotional sales, I'm sure you can find the game for less on PC. Well, the short of it, before I get into everything, it's a great action FPS. I'll give it that. Um, you got a wide selection of guns. I think there is eight guns. Uh, there's either eight or seven guns in the game. Uh, they all do different stuff. None of them are, the, are similar to each other. And uh, you also have some powers you can mess with in the game to uh, help defeat uh, your enemies. Vehicles, though, very mediocre. Uh, they're workable, but, you know. There is variety in them, but, you know, not great. Uh, and the story is predictable, yet quite endearing. Uh, the story and the characters that you are allowed to see. And overall, the open world uh, game is the... Well, the open world design, it's it's a static open world. If you know what a static open world is, it pretty much means the world kind of stays the same. And, you know, th things in a certain uh, region will change, but they'll always be spotting new enemies. And it is most definitely a departure from Rage 2, uh, sorry, not Rage 2, Rage, uh, that was released in 2010. That, uh, that Rage was a bit darker, this game's a lot more focused on the shooting action in this. So let's get into the real review, the overall review. You have your menu, continue game, I'm in, uh, new game 1, you can see here. Uh, new game, of course, that will start you a new, non, uh, new game plus game. New game plus! I can't actually start a new new game plus uh i believe so if you go into my load game all these are new game pluses because i accidentally oversaved on my original non-new game plus game so i believe as long as you have a new game uh as long as you have a game save file in here that has completed the main quest i believe you can always do a new game plus from that now i'm also not sure if you can do new game pluses on top of new game pluses i believe so otherwise why are they counting one here Iron Man mode. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. D don't die. Don't die. And I believe you can even, once you complete Iron Man mode on, uh, uh, I believe you can do New Game Plus with it as well. You just do it from the save game uh, file. So that's very nice. Um, and I mean, really, what New Game Plus is for and Iron Man mode, I really think you could combine those to make a rather challenging, you know, how, how many uh, playthroughs can you get, you know, before it gets too difficult. Uh, you have friends and statistics. Uh, I cannot access them since I am offline. I can also not access the store because A, I'm offline, and B, I do not have a Bethesda account. Really, Bethesda, uh, or the store, I believe, only allows you to buy Rage Coins and uh, cosmetics and DLC. But you can also just get the DLC through whatever service you want to use. I'm current. I am, you know, of course, using Steam. Settings. They almost did this perfectly. Uh, there's there's tons of settings. Um, you'll see my first gripe immediately. There's no drop down menus. There's just a uh, little shifting, which is fine for you know small detailed things, you know on off things and things. But English or the language, 
Why, 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 why? Yeah. And also more text languages than audio languages. That's pretty regular, but, you know, always be nice to see, you know, in equal amounts. Controller. You cannot rebind any controller controls. You can only rebind keyboard and mouse controls. But you do have all of your description of your controller layout there. Very nice to see. Yeah. They got they got chock full of settings. Again, no drop down menu here. You gotta scroll through every single resolution. Very annoying. Uh, field of view, mine's way up there because I love it. Uh, motion blur off, of course. Like I said, they have most everything you would probably want in your settings. Very nice to see. Only thing that I am you know upset about or not upset but disappointed in is this weird menu choice and unable to rebind controllers. But alas. And they also, nicely enough, have uh, credits and uh, credits for the DLC located in the settings menu, so you can check those out whenever. Very nice to see. And of course, exit the desktop. Alright, let's get into it. The actual gameplay. Uh, we're going to start... Yes, yes, yes. We're going to start right here. So yeah, option menu, solid. Love it. And the actual look of the game. It looks fine. Uh, it looks pretty decent. Runs fine. I'm running at 60 FPS right now. Run at 60 FPS most the whole time. You might ask why I do not have a gun drawn right now. Well, I can't. There we go. If I run, you can see it. There's certain... I still can't shoot my gun. Let's go a little further. I think on the other side of this road will be good. Ah, there we go. So yes, immediately you cannot go anywhere, shoot everything, and destroy everything. Because there are some things... Well... Of course, the environment's not destructible. So, there's plenty of things you can't destroy. There's, of course... I do find it interesting that there's... Oh, crap. Yeah, there's roving... Roving biker gangs and, uh... Gangs of enemies that just run around and shoot at you. You can, you know, fight them in combat. Vehicle combat much better. But yeah, so you can't go anywhere and destroy everything because certain towns and areas you enter... Yeah, there we go. Lagoonie. Can't shoot any of my guns, can't do anything. What a shame. But yeah, no, the game looks fine. You know, there's plenty of trash around, which kind of makes up for the uh, lack of destructible materials, because trash will go flying when you, you know, blow stuff up. Oh, uh, yeah, short legs, yeah. Having fun there, okay. <laughs> uh, I only had one crash in the entire game, and it was in this menu. The game kind of uses a uh, catch-all menu, which I like, so anytime you open it up, uh, you can go through everything, your map, your log, inventory, nanotrites, which are, uh, they're your power upgrades, but they're also like, you know, quality of life, like constitution, less damage. Uh, weapons, you of course have all your weapons, uh, you don't of course unlock them until you find them in arcs, of course. Projects, uh, these are sort of, these are your quality of life upgrades, um, yeah. Yeah, throw yeah. Increase your throwable amount. Weapon juggler, you just if you run out of ammo and a weapon. So pretty much all these you're gonna want to get eventually. Um but before you get them, the game's kinda meh. Not 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 meh so much, but there, there there's stuff in the game that you'll be doing, you'll be like, man, I wish I could do oh wait, you can do this, you know, there's stuff. The game allows you to do pretty much anything and play the game however you want, but only after you unlock everything, so yeah. Uh, story overall is okay. Let's uh, show you an issue with it, though. Um, so, ground control right now. I'm looking for information about Kavasir in Laguni. So this is Laguni. Nice. All right, let me talk to the first person I see. Okay. Well, first thing you'll find out in Rage 2, you cannot talk to certain people. Certain NPCs are just set dressing. And this one, it seems, its set dressing is to A, be called short legs, which gives me no information other than, you know, I guess their legs are shorter. And this person is, I would assume, drugged out of their mind, uh, making, or attempting to make paint angels on dried paint when, on concrete. So really all they're probably doing is rubbing their skin raw. So, yeah, drugs in this world are a real thing. Alright, so here's some more people. Oh. Timo nails. Nope. Oh, dead body that's frozen in a weird position. Nothing. Got him. Okay, can't talk to you. Stacy. Okay, can't talk to you. 
Okay, ooh, Ellie, nope, can't talk to you, yeah. So, a majority of the NPCs in this game you will be unable to talk to, they are just set dressing. And some of them have interesting names and stuff, and you might want to learn more about them, but you cannot. Oh, yeah. So, he just said, hey, Walker. So, he knows who I am, Ranger Walker, but he does not know... Yeah. Yeah. But I cannot talk to him, I cannot, you know, do anything. I can sometimes get lines out of them, but that's it. Nothing game development. Oh, look! The game Ranger. does tell you. Yeah. You haven't seen a Ranger in a long, long time. Now, you look a bit lost to me. Yeah. So, NPCs that you can't talk to will have this little text chat above you, and if they're, like, storyline dependent, they might call you over like this guy did and tell you to come talk to them. So, let's go talk to them. Mo Rummy. Let's talk to you, Mo Rummy. We fought back to back, your kind and mine. Back in the war. Name's Mo Rummy. I'm just an old vet who keeps an eye out for the people of Laguni. Been living here a good long time now, and I know just about everyone. Do you know anything about a Dr. Kvasir? Scientist, real old? Haven't heard that name since just after the war. He moved into the deep secreto, and then went completely off the radar. Nobody's seen him since. Anything else you can tell me? Well, the area around his base is usually awful quiet, on account of the heavy old security. But lately, there's been a whole lot of noise coming from that part of the wetland. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. I found him. Still alive and kicking. Right on. Well, if you want to pick up some work around here, take a peek at the bounty board. So, once again, this character, like in other uh, areas, uh, other uh, settlements I've been to, I've talked to him, he's told me to check out the bounty board, and of course bounties, yeah. These always regenerate, they give you a rough difficulty level, um, and uh, the rewards, and... I mean, they do give you, like, what is this person wanted for? Sabotaging vehicles in Chaz car races and theft of mobile weapons trader van. So, interesting stuff, but really, and it's annoying that you have to go to every single one to kind of, you know, read it. But yeah, so, yeah, you can see these are randomly generated because this person is also wanted for theft of mobile weapon traders van, but also for dismemberment of a local celebrity selling a mixture of engine oil and piss as swamp swill and wanton acts of cannibalism. So, yeah. But this person who's murdered and is a cannibal is actually less of a difficulty than the other person who's not wanted for murder. But whatever. Really all these do is spawn a group of enemies on the map and you go to that area on the map and there'll be a group of enemies of a certain size, usually not at a, a set location. But usually kind of out, you know, amongst uh, the rabble of, uh, of the map. Uh, so you can go, just go kill them. And once you kill them, you don't even have to return. No, no, you do have to return and you usually have to talk to someone and they'll give you the reward. But yeah, so these are the locations and everything. But you'll see I have a bounty here. There's probably not a location there. There's probably a location here. But yeah, this is probably just maybe some buildings or something. Or it might just be out in the middle of the wilderness. So Mo Rummy, can I? Nope. Yeah. The only real choice you get in what you say in dialogues, and I haven't even looked to see if the dialogue, uh, the uh, the dialogues that your character says are any different from the uh, uh, male and female characters. Uh, that's all. You, that's the only choice you get at the beginning of the game. You can choose between a male or female character, and from then on, I think pretty much everything's the same, other than the voice actor who is voicing the lines for your character. But of course, there might be some slight variations here and there. All right, so he told us to go check out an area and go see Dr. Kavasier, which is all the way over here. Now, because I'm in New Game Plus, the game is very nice to let you sort of uh, more quickly speed run the game by giving you access to all the locations you were already aware of when you New Game Plus. So, yeah, everything that I did... In the last game that I defeated or discovered, I can go to again and do again. And I can fast travel to them all. So let's just travel to Kavasir. It's a long, you know, drive. I don't want to drive it. Let's just go there. And you will get to see... Uh, the reason why I'm really coming out here is... I've showed you, like, the worst, pretty much, of the uh, story and how it's presented in this game. Um, so now I'm going to show you a bit more... Uh, the actual cutscenes this game has... Because, you know, it actually does have cutscenes, shockingly enough. Oh, no, that's not what I want. So let's see what Kavasir wants. And I think, yeah, yeah, we'll get some shooting out here, too. 
Yes. Oh. Should be it. Where are you? There's my there's my deep guy up. So yeah, even though I'm in New Game Plus, I have all the great weapons, so it doesn't really cause me an issue. Now it should be noted, this game can be as hard as you want because you literally start out with a pistol and a uh, assault rifle, which are great, but unless they're upgraded to shoot past armor, you really have an issue with shooting enemies. Ah, here we go. This is a shielded enemy. So enemies with shield or shields are a little harder to take down, not impossible. Yeah. And you'll notice as I kill them that they're dropping these blue cylinders that I'm able to pick up. Those blue Oh. It's you in your ranger uniform. Step closer, please. Talk into the com box. Yes, the one with the cactus on it. A smiling succulent with a hat. Yes. So yeah, as I was saying, you'll shoot enemies, they'll drop these blue cylinders that, if you don't pick up after a while, will be, uh, they'll despawn essentially, so you won't be able to get them. But if you pick them up before they're gone, you can get plenty of health back. So, very, it's, it's Doom has a similar thing where, uh, I believe they call them, like, glory kills or something, but if you kill an enemy in a certain way, you get health back in Doom. In Rage 2, if you kill an enemy and you pick up their health, um that they drop before it despawns, you get their health back. So the game very much wants you to fight up close and personal. But let's talk to Dr. Kvasir. I came looking for a Dr. Kvasir here. There you are. Let me just... Let me see. Uniform is wartime issue. Modified for use in eco-pod fortification. Vineland, no? Then you must be. Yes. Second generation artist. How fascinating. Vineland, yeah. I'm pretty much what's left of it. Hmm. You check out. Hold on, and I will let you in. Yeah, you're not supposed to see that, but whatever. It's fine. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah, there's multiple times where you use hand scanners in this game, and if you watch my hand, completely gloved by my ranger suit, which you can argue they're more of trusting me because I'm in a ranger suit, so I can understand that. All right, I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna see the weird choice they did. There's a lot of cutscenes in this game that will be half cutscenes, and then the cutscene will end, and you'll still be talking to the NPCs that you were talking to in the cutscene. It's just interesting. It seems like they maybe wanted to at some point. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate, but there's a couple cutscenes in the game that end, and you're still talking to the character, and you're out of the cutscene, can walk around now. It's it's interesting. I don't know why they did it. It's just a choice. Welcome, Ranger. Welcome. It's been too long since I played host to one of your kind. Dr. Anton Kvasir. Genius scientist with a shifty past. Original Arcist, pre-Apophis. They said he worked for the Authority and helped create their mutant soldiers. Then he turned on his masters, joined the cause, fought alongside my folks in the Authority War. Not sure how I feel about mad scientists at this point, but I do need his help. It's an impressive setup, Dr. Kavasir. Kvasir, yes, my lab suffices. Legs. <clears throat> my research used to be more mechanically inclined, but over time the machines, it turns out, fail. I prefer to rely now on genetically engineered solutions, simply because they can heal. Makes sense, I guess. I hope you don't mind, Walker, yes? I put your scan through my ARC mainframe. I know you now. Your parents, mm -hmm. such a tragedy when they were lost. But Arvina proudly took you in, no? She did. As if I was her own. But they killed her. They destroyed everything I ever knew. Dead. 
Oh no. She was formidable. I was always hoping to. But alas, no. It was a massacre. An unstoppable force. Mutants, a new kind of creature. All tech and armor and guns and huge. Taller than any building. And they were led by a man. General Martin Cross. Oh, he is back then. It was to be expected. Him and his lapdog scientist, Dr. Bendros, were always hard at work on their longevity project. But you see, for that problem, I just might have some solutions. Solutions? I've got one for you. Project Dagger. Ah, you know. <laughs> yes, of course you do. Prowley must have told you already. It will be easy for me to do my part. The project was always equal parts action and science. Come back in about uh, six years or so. Then I will have concocted the nanotrite reprogramming agent, or serum, as I prefer to call it. Whoa, did you say six years? Yes, thereabouts. The science cannot be rushed. <laughs> yes, it can. Better computing power. But alas, my lab is old and tired. Only the elusive Eco-15, still in orbit, could provide the computing power to speed up this process. The Eco-Pod still in orbit? I've been hearing about that since I was a kid. Yes, it was a miscalculation. Remained on the firmament as the others came tumbling down. If Eco-15 was to be forced down, I could tap into the processing power of that ancient supercomputer. Think of it, to siphon that brute computing force into my poor old laboratory. Is there any way to force it down? Hmm, yes. It can be done from the Eden Space Center. Then I'll do it. Yes. Wait a minute, you knew I was gonna volunteer to do it, right? Yes. So yeah, uh, the game gets predictable, and like I said, I don't know why they do that weird thing where they cut between an actual cutscene and you just, you know, standing there talking to the person, but whatever. It's their choice, it's what they did, just interesting. But yeah, no, the game's predictable. You're gonna go talk to NPCs who are either gonna have a cutscene or not, and the NPC's gonna either need something to be done, and you're gonna say, yeah, I'll do it, or, you know, the NPC will, you know. Not say that they need something done, but that, you know, they could get something done, and you could do it, and then you'll do it. And the thing you'll do is pretty much always go and shoot up a place, so. It's understandable. It's a, it's a shooter. That's the main thing the game is, and so the cutscenes kind of just tie the shooting sequences together. So, yeah, story predictable, you know, some endearing characters. There's some very interesting stuff, like if, you, if uh, we're, you know, if we go back and look at him, you notice his legs, which were... I guess a biological mutant of some sort that he was using as legs. Their mouth was talking when his mouth was, uh, the legs mouth was moving when he was talking. So you could argue, oh, maybe, you know, it's entirely possible that there's a neural link there or something. And there's a lot of interesting stuff the game sets up. It doesn't fully play with, but you know, that's fine. Now let's go. I have a saved game over by where I need to go for this mission. So we'll go over there and take care of that. And this will give us a chance to look at the shooting and the driving in the game. Seen a little bit of shooting, but not all of it. Let's see. Yeah, I want... Uh, yeah, let's start with the one weapon I have a slight problem with, but we'll see that later. Alright, so vehicles. So everything but the Phoenix... Yeah, pretty much everything but the Phoenix you have to find or wait until you get in-game. So, that's not too bad. A lot of these you can find around the game. You can see I haven't found some of them. And uh, they all cost money to call in. Most of them are $10. Um, some of the big tank... Uh, there's about, like, three tanks in the game. Tank-like. So, this one's a tank which, like, fires nuclear rounds. Uh, this one is essentially a mortar launcher that fires rockets. Pretty great. Yeah, they're all very different. All great. Uh, so, this is a tank, but... 
it's a uh, main weapon kind of sucks. It's main weapons, like a flak weapon. Um, and a lot of the vehicles, um, are, they either don't have weapons, like Icarus doesn't have weapons. Raptor doesn't have rep weapons, although you can use a pistol on it. But if they do have weapons, they have infinite ammo on them. So let's call this one in. This is the, uh, shrouded tank. And yep. Yeah. Quad barreled, uh, kind of flak weapon. It's fine. Although, yeah, the vehicle itself is kind of slow. But all vehicles do have a uh, jet boost. And everything handles kind of badly, which is more noticeable in the quicker vehicles. This Doctor, is a slower vehicle. So it handles a little bit better, or is more easy to control. Pretty much all vehicles in this game run like a wet sponge. But that would be no problem for a ranger. No problem at all. And let's pull up the vehicle, the main vehicle you get from the beginning of the game. Oh, is it playtime again, Walker? This is the only vehicle that, if you're up here, if it were low on health, I could repair it. So, it's a good vehicle to drive around. Now, the bad thing is, you have what you have a... This is the only vehicle that has, you know, a variety of weapons on it. It's got four different weapons on it, you know. Two auto cannons, one larger, one smaller. Sorry, Gatling guns and an auto cannon. But you'll notice they all have ammo. And so all of them, you have to go buy ammo for or find ammo around the world. So not great. And it does have, uh, in, like, most boost of any vehicle in the game. So that's nice. And you can kind of see them kind of sliding all over the place. Yeah. You're on sand most of the time. You're on sand most of the time, so I can guess it's understandable that you'd be sliding around, but even on like concrete, when you do have concrete, you're pretty much, if you want to turn effectively in the game, going to have to break into the turn and use your boost to get out, get to recover your speed in the turn. Let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, that's fine. All right, yep, good chance. I lost some health there. Let me get out of the vehicle. I started smoking. And let me just repair it. Regenerating. That's all it is. Doesn't take super long. Very nice. So, the game kind of does understand it's going to be pretty rough and rumble, you know, in certain areas. And your boost can pretty much get you over any obstacle in the game in this vehicle because of how much boost you have. Nope. Sorry. And I do like the effect of, so I've been driving around in the dirt now, and my vehicle's got a ton of dirt on it. And if I go drive around in a, an area with different, you know, colored dirt, that colored dirt will get on my vehicle over time. It's quite nice to see, you know, the interaction between my vehicle and the world. So yeah, with boost and handbraking, you can get, get in pretty quickly. Now, this being the best vehicle in the game for, you know, pretty much anything, because of the weapon variety, you still don't want to be using this vehicle. It's the best vehicle in the game, but of course... Yeah, I'm gonna run out of ammo pretty quick. And look at all that uh, feltrite that's just sitting out here that I was unable to pick up because I wasn't here. Ah, here we go. This is the grab dart launcher. I quite enjoy it. Yeah, you. it's one of the weapons you can kind of queue up. You can queue up the death of enemies, so really if you wanted to clear out an entire room or area if you wanted to. Very nice. And you have health infusions, and also I have an upgrade where if I just hold my focus I will regain health. And of course always check your HUD, gives you plenty of information on what the enemies are. Oh, that's an explosive. So, Feltrite engines. This game just throws Feltrite at you if you look for it. Now, that's just rubble. Okay. And health infusion. Yeah, there's just stuff lying around the game. Plenty of loot. So, the game consists of you going to areas, shooting stuff on foot, most likely. Um, if you're shooting stuff in a vehicle, you don't really, you don't really don't have a chance to pick up. Uh, any loot or equipment, unless you're defeating convoys. 
Which, as you defeat convoys, you will get... I think it's... Yeah, I think you just get whatever the quest to defeat that convoy rewards. So, mostly uh, vehicle parts that let you upgrade your vehicle. But really, vehicle parts only... Sorry. Vehicle parts only let you upgrade this vehicle. Oh, sorry. Yeah, vehicle parts let you only upgrade this vehicle. And so once you've upgraded everything, what's the reason to get more upgrade? You know, what? what's the point of more vehicle parts other than to sell them? And storage containers is one of the loot items in the game that repeats everywhere. And they actually... I can't see anyone. Oh, right there. Another one of the collectibles in the game. I believe it's a uh, spy, yeah, spy drone. So that's just saying you find in the area and destroy at locations. So yeah, you go to locations, you either destroy things or you loot things or destroy things that will give you then loot. So yeah, like I said, just a shooter. Great, F great shooter, but you know, it's fine. Issues I have with the shooting. So felt right engine. Uh, let me just shoot it and make it blow up with this grab dart launcher. Yeah. Grav Dart Launcher does a minuscule amount of damage. <laughs> it's it's kind of hilarious. Oh, more more yeah. Yeah. So one bullet should have destroyed those boxes on any other actual weapon, but because it's the Grav Dart Launcher it does barely any uh damage at all. In fact, we have something we can track the damage of. Let's heal you up to full health. And shoot you up a bunch. So let's just dump a whole mag into here. See if it works at all. Yeah. So vehicles, you can still throw around with grab darts. Uh, of course, you take, you know, takes more grab darts. But yeah, grab darts kind of the worst gun in the game because there's some enemies in the uh, in the game that you need to shoot and kill, <laughs> uh, uh, basically. And I don't know if grab darts will work on them because they are large enemies that I don't. I think you'd have to dump a whole lot of grab darts into to actually hurt. But yeah, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna shoot stuff. Go to an area, shoot I stuff, the space collect center. loot. It's in ruins. All good. And, like you said, overrun by thugs. It should pose no problem to you. And as for Eden, well, it was built to withstand anything. Let us get you proper access. Press palm to hand scan in the reception desk. One funny thing I like about this game, which will become apparent in a second. Wow, look at that. Excellent. Now, allow me to give you full access. Hey, Doc. Better hurry up. Rogue caught the scent. Wait and hold. I have it almost. Ah! I almost have it. Just give me a few more minutes. system this even for me I am just about to break on through Mission control is on the third floor. So yeah, this mission has started. This is one of the longer missions. The story missions are really probably the longest missions, um, unless you know you have an issue and are dying repeatedly. They're all all the uh, world map locations are pretty short, no more than maybe 40 or 50 enemies. And your story pl story gameplay missions are definitely the most enemies and longest missions you'll be doing. We're not going to see the rest of this mission since I have A, played it before, and B, just wanted to show you all kind of some of the gunplay. If you noticed, I'm not really zooming. Um, there's some guns that you can aim down sights. Pistol, you can. Assault rifle, you can. Shotgun. So, shotgun, you aim down sight. Well, you shoot it regularly, you get, you know, buckshot or birdshot. You aim down sight. 
you get a single uh, projectile instead. So, nice switch up between slug, rocket launcher. You either shoot a standard rocket that you can detonate whatever, or you zoom and you can track targets, which you can't actually even shoot it unless you have a track target. And that'll split it into micro missiles. Kind of nice. Grab dart. I can't. I can't. Because your right mouse button is shooting your gravity dart elsewhere. So that's when that happens. So you can't aim down sight of grab dart launcher. Uh, this gun you can't aim down sight because it fires small little salvos. And then either over time or when you press right mouse button, it'll detonate them. So, you know. All these guns are fun and everything, but there's no real... Oh, you can zoom. You can... Yeah. You can aim down sight with this weapon. And all it does is charge up a more powerful shot than if you were to fire it from the hip. So, nice to see there. This gun, you can't aim down sight because as you shoot it, it'll overheat. And if you hold right mouse button, it'll, you know, deheat more quickly. So, when it comes to shooting, the main issues I have are... that they're, they're, You'll notice there's no ranged weapons, really. I mean... This is your sniper rifle. And even with it, that's the zoom you get. So, now the game does help by, you know, when you aim down sight, or even if you're not, your reticle light up red if someone's right, you know, dead in the center of your reticle. So that's nice. Also, there's some weapon upgrades. You'll notice pretty much every weapon's the same. You have four levels, and you have two options on the first one, one on the second one, two on the thir uh, third one, and... Uh, one on the fifth one. Sorry, fourth one. I don't know why they had to go two, three, four. I guess because level one is when you have it. So this means that if you want to upgrade your weapon, you, you know, there's some time, there's some upgrades you have to get. Um, I mean, armor breaker makes sense. Weapon mastery. This upgrade's useless, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it changes your burst from, I believe, three rounds. Oh, sorry. Ooh, big mic bump, mic bump there. Maybe I'll cut that out. This upgrade's kind of useless in my opinion. It upgrades, you know, your pistol to be a uh, five-round burst instead of three-round burst. So, you know, really reduces your ammo capacity in there. Uh, holstered reload, nice to see. Weapon mastery, again, it's different on this weapon. Yeah. Kills return bullets to the magazine based on override multiplier. Very nice. Yeah. So, a lot of these single uh, upgrades are nice, but it also kind of makes you wonder, like, hey couldn't you know maybe they're quality of life upgrades pretty much all of them to me so like explosion range yeah of course i would want that of course grab dart launcher rapid fire of course i would want that hyper cannon armor breaker of course i would yeah all the single upgrade ones here are all like yeah of course i would want that of course i would want that on this weapon what could have the you know options have been you know and i mean it just doesn't seem as inspired the weapon upgrades because even like look i either get seekers or rapid fire so either i shoot more or I can actually, you know, more of my shots go toward enemies. I either vent efficiently when I'm in cooldown mode, or I just, you know, when I overheat the gun, it cools more quickly from then. So, yeah, they're all, you know, meh. They don't really change the way in which the gun works too much. Um, I mean, this one kind of does. You can get, yeah, you, so you can get, I think, like up to four targets on here instead of increasing reload and magazine capacity. It's all, it's all just quality of life stuff. You know, some of the upgrades don't really change the way the gun works too much. But it's all fine. Now, I said we were done here. We are done here. We're going to go check uh, what all this looting and everything gets you in the game. Uh, yeah, I should be at Wellspring. Oh, boy. So yeah, you've gone, either it's a story mission or it's a, an area in the game that you went to, you shot up a ton of stuff, and you now say, okay, I got a ton of loot on me, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to go to a town, and you're going to sell your stuff. Now, there's a limited number of merchants in the game, and pretty much every location has all of them, and I think there's four or five of them, so we can go see them all right now. For your ride. They're all vendors. Uh, this is Rusty Jr., and this is, what do they call it? Yeah, auto parts. So, you have your auto parts shop. Do you need... This is all going to be car stuff. So, all of your car ammo that you're going to have to buy repeatedly is all here. And you can go to sell, of course. I can... Yeah, you do have junk you pick up in the game. You just sell it. Nope. Yeah, there's no sell all. Kind of unfortunate. And, of course, you can sell your ammo back uh, for your vehicle, which you're probably not going to do. But, you know, whatever. 
So. You still here? Sorry. And he would have auto parts if I hadn't bought them all out of auto parts yet. Oh, let's see. You know, another NPC I can talk to. There's more to police in this place than just keeping roughnecks in check. Nobody gets in here looking like some wasteland slum scum. We got standards in Wellspring. Feel me? So yeah, you talk to people, you get some... Best case scenario, you get some, uh, a quest or get notified of an area of interest on the map. Worst case scenario, they just have a line of dialogue for you and don't really progress the story in any way, shape, or form, but kind of fill out the world a little more. So really, not worth talking to them. Oh, CyberDoc. This is this is your upgrades. Yeah, if you noticed, I have 150 health and... Uh, yeah. So, really, you can just get health augmentation, which increases by 5%. I'm at max. I can't get any more. Um, he does have more to sell, but I can't use them. And even when you New Game Plus, these upgrades will be carried over. So, you don't really... You, you can't get more and more and more. Uh, I can... Yeah, my weapon damage is already at 150% as well. I'm just going to increase my overdrive augmentation to the max. Keep your head about you. So now there's no more reason to ever talk to the Cyberdoc anymore. I can't buy or sell from him. I can just reset my augmentations, which I don't know why I would want to do that. Because then I have to buy him again. Uh, oh, this isn't. Yeah. Uh, Mutant Bash is still a thing. Yeah. He thinks I'm a champ because, yes, I did go on Mutant Bash already and won it. Um, Mutant Bash, it's still there. Uh, there's different modes that you can play it. Some that challenge you. Oh, only use a pistol or a wing stick, that kind of thing. Oh, this is a merchant I do quite like. Curious? I can hit my favorite ranger okay. is back. So, this is an information broker, pretty much. Um, normally, they just give you information of locations on your map. It's really helpful first time you're playing through the game, because you can buy all the arc information, know where all your arcs are. Although... There is one vehicle that does break the game and kind of lets you just kind of search for what you need in the game. But I can go over that in a second when I go get on that vehicle. All right, what's this shop? Ah, gear. So this is all gear. Uh, yeah, I'm out. Now, you don't even have to buy from this person, really. Oh, yeah. Entering rest mode. Oh, wait, no. What did I want? Random memory. Ah, you want to try booster. I don't need this. Um... Yeah, these upgrade my nanotrite abilities, which I've maxed out already. Those are the quality of life thing. Yeah, nanotrites. These abilities. These are your powers and such. I've maxed them all out. What do you got, vendor? Okay, jack of all the trades. So this allows you to buy components and arc cores, which I no longer need, and neuronic interfaces, which I no longer need. Arc cores, neurotic interfaces you use at the cyber dock to get your uh, augmentation upgrades. Components, though, you use to make inventory equipment. So I can build wing sticks, I can build grenades, I can build health infusions, I can build overdrive infusions. And they usually only require, I think, yeah, all of them that I can make so far only require two components each. They might require multiple of those components, but you can still make them. Yeah. Quite nice, uh, especially once you get your components in your inventory, because you can carry a hundred of them each. You can literally not worry about it anymore. But I still need to buy... I've been bad at this. Um, uh, with schematics. Uh, once you buy schematics, you can actually create them. And a meat vendor, which sells health infusions, mutant spores, which you can... Mutant spores are interesting. They're kind of quasi-currency because Mutant Bash TV will buy them for you for Mutant Bash TV coins, which you can then use to buy from the Mutant Bash TV store. Uh, there's some cosmetics in there and such. But I can also sell my mutant spores, which I got from killing mutants. Will do, ma'am. That's nice. And last but not least, the gun shop. Yeah. Sells ammo here sells uh weapon core mods which i no longer need because i've upgraded and also sells um yes cosmetics so golden stuff that's very nice you know what you know what i don't think i have any revolver cosmetics there we go and so we can go see how the cosmetics look too 
So this is the gameplay loop. Um, when interrupted by the story, you know, you'll be interrupted by the story. And when you're not interrupted by the story, you'll be shooting things, looting things, and also going to town to sell stuff. And of course, another way to make money pretty easily is if you take any vehicle from out here in the wilds and bring it back to any town, you can then take your uh, uh, equipment, uh, sorry, any vehicle you park back at town will be deposited either as a brand new vehicle back on the, uh, into your kind of cache of vehicles and you'll be allowed to spawn it, but you'll also get about 100 cash for each vehicle you bring back. Okay, this is nice. Uh, revolver, that's right. So, you can kind of see I got like the platinum one on this, nice and shiny. Got kind of the rugged black on my uh, assault rifle, nice. Got the blood splattered shotgun, which I love. Not, not you know, who, who needs to take the blood off? Oh, I'm almost out of ammo. Should have bought more. Rocket launcher, got a nice big green. Grabbed art launcher, I don't think I have a skin on. Oh, revolver, that's what it was. And all of these you can just R to change the skin. And let's go to F to equip. And a nice golden revolver, changes instantly, don't have to reload, quite nice. That's a convoy. You really only have, like, the only way to take down convoys is if you're using your, what's it called? Your uh, Phoenix vehicle. This vehicle has no weapons on it, kind of sucks. And this is the vehicle that breaks the game because with this vehicle, I can just fly everywhere. Nothing on the ground, well, if it does attempt to shoot me, I can run away before I'm dead. Like, let's just watch here. Shoot me, y'all, shoot me. Y'all gonna shoot me? Anyone wanna shoot me? Anyone want to shoot me? See, look, they're shooting at me. Anyone want to shoot me? Anyone want to shoot me? You care at all that I'm here? So yeah, these NPCs, yeah. Something tries to shoot me, I can fly out of the way pretty quickly. Not an issue. Not an issue whatsoever. Uh, we'll check out this place because I feel like this place kind of sums up the game <laughs> in its entirety. So yeah, game, story's okay, NPCs, you know, they have canned dialogue, you can't choose what you want to say to them. Is this just a... Now this is interesting. Okay, no, it's just a missile shell that's here. That's fine. Okay, easy peasy. Yeah, it's a static world. There's enemies all over the world. You can go places and shoot them. That's great. It's nice. You know, it's how most static worlds set it up. The vehicle handling. I mean, we're at the point in the video where I'm just whinging at this point. Vehicle handling, it's not atrocious, but there is one point in the game where you have to, have to complete a uh, race to in order to advance the campaign. And if you don't... Yeah, if you, if you don't do it, you have to... Uh, continue uh, trying it over and over again. No penalty to failing it, though, other than you have to start over again. And ammo. If you noticed, I'm out of ammo, which... Uh, no, yeah, an inventory here. No. Where is it? Log. Map. Vehicles. Projects. Weapons. Hmm. I thought there was a point where it would show you... All oh, yes, down here. Resources. So, in your inventory here, you can see everything. There's a limit on all ammo. There's a, a limit on vehicle ammo, and there's a vehicle weapon ammo, which to me does not make a lot of sense when you're in an open world game and you're always going to keep finding ammo on the ground, you know? At some point, you know, these are arbitrarily set by the devs. They just wanted you to have it like this so that you couldn't go on a killing spree without stopping to buy ammo at some point, which seems unfortunate, especially vehicle ammo. It seems a lot harder to, or a lot more rare to pick up in the wilds than... Uh, normal weapons ammo, which normal weapons ammo, enemies will drop that, and you can also find it lying about. And crafting materials actually seem to be more uh, common than uh, vehicle ammos, which is interesting. And interestingly, yeah, 
I don't know why, but I cannot scroll. Oh, man. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, for some reason I can't scroll down to see my upgrade items on the bottom here. But you should be able to see that as well. Alas, oh well. Uh, and I already talked about this, but you're really only going to be engaging enemies at a certain range. And, yeah. Yeah, over a certain range you're not going to be engaging enemies. Because of two things. At a certain range, the enemies despawn. I can still see you there. Still see and shoot at you there. Still see and shoot at you there. So we can still see the enemies there. Still see them, still see them. Still see them. Oh! Still see y'all. This should be it. This should be it right here. Now, I can see the enemy, but to get a shot on them, I have no zoom. There's no zoom here, I can't zoom, and even if I were to get on them, I can't, I can't get a red reticule lined up on them to ensure that I have a kill shot. So, yeah, over a certain range in the game, you're just not even gonna have, you just don't even worry, don't even worry about it. You're out of range, not gonna hit them anyway. It's a shame, but you know, it's how the game works. I can understand it. I already talked about gun upgrades and how they're all kind of, you know, different flavors of the same. Okay, so Toxic Dump, which is where I'm at, you can see some info's popped up on the top left screen because I got here and it said I have three storage containers to get. That info will always pop up. So, let's leave and come back. Don't know how far I have to go. Probably here. Sure. Okay. This should be it. Yeah. Sure, why not? Yep, toxic dump. So, that information is always going to pop up on the game. Even after I shoot this place up and kill everyone here, which I'm going to do with one shot, I bet you. Um, even after I do that, and even if I'm flying or, you know, flying by on the Icarus real quick, location info is always going to pop up. It's just an annoyance, uh, especially if you're toward end game and using the Icarus to fly over everything. You'll be passing, you know, every... 5, 10 seconds, a different area that you've completed already, and the game's gonna be like, you wanna know about this place, right? I mean, to an extent, I do. Like, if I still want, um, what is it? If I still want to know about, um, collectibles that I haven't picked up in the area, yes, I wanna know about it. But after that, there's no reason to let me know about the area. Um, unless, you know, enemies repopulate, which they don't in areas, um, actual map market locations. So yeah, it's it's a fine game. It's open world shooter. You know, works fine. You shoot stuff and uh, the enemies die <laughs> and you get their loot. So game works fine. I'm kind of rambling at this point. I mean, I'd get this game if you're into shooting. That's the only reason I'd buy this game. If you're into open world games, uh, there's plenty of other games that are more interesting of an open world. Not saying this one's bad, just saying the entire open world here kind of serves the shooting. That's all it does, which is fine. It's a shooter first, action shooter. Uh, I would call it almost uh, kind of on the level of Bulletstorm, I believe was the name of the game. Um, this game is almost very much a action uh, sh first person shooter, and that's fine. That's all it needs to be. It works fine that way. Uh, and if you've played Rage 1, as I said at the beginning, it's a very major departure. If you haven't noticed so far, the game is a lot brighter. Um, it's not so much a horror game. Uh, I don't fully remember Rage, the first Rage in 2010, but I do remember it being more of a scary thriller game, you know. Maybe not so much horror, but definitely a thriller game. But yeah, this is a shooter. It takes place in an open world that sets up some pretty amazing points for you to shoot. And this place kind of demonstrates that because, let's see. Nope.
Where is it? Okay. You tell me I can't shoot it? Ah, yes. This is the one problem with this game. So I can't shoot that. There's nothing up there I can shoot to make it fall. But there is a button I can press. So yes, I don't even have to shoot the place. I just have to drop the brick on the enemy. So yeah, you go to a place, you destroy stuff. This game, or this area, completely encapsulates how this game works. Go, destroy, loot, have fun. So yeah, that's what you're into. Rage 2 is perfectly fit for you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I have been a formal bust, and uh, until next time, gamers, take care of yourselves and drink some H2O.